Friends in Recovery, the Addiction Recovery Podcast is brought to you by Genesis House and the Friends in Recovery community, a thriving network of individuals who are fighting back against the stigma of addiction and recovery. Join your hosts, the Podfather, Jersey Ed, as they break the silence and speak up about the real issues of addiction, treatment, and recovery. Friends in Recovery, the Addiction Recovery Podcast is available on Facebook, Podbean, iTunes, and YouTube, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Now, here are your friends in recovery. Hey, everybody. Welcome to friendsinrecoverypodcast.com. I am the podfather, Mike Miles, and I'm here with Jersey Ed, everybody, and uh, Studio G. And we have a new guest today. I mean, a new uh, co-host today. We are bringing on the lovely Skylar. Uh, she was so great at our our last uh, our last podcast, Podfather, that you and I kind of had a little powwow and... Uh, Decided that uh, let's get some uh, a young person on here and let's get you know let's get the young crowd going here and uh, so young that's, you know. that's it that's it <laughs> everything we're not Podfather so Skylar welcome it. thank you <laughs> intelligent thank you for uh, being a host with us Skylar thank you thank you for having me and, and you make me feel young because oh. at thirty six I feel like I'm old but <laughs> <laughs> at least I'll have that Good. crowd coming in <laughs> thirty six. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Real quick, guys, our, our guest today is Anne Periello. She um, has been on um, our show in the past, our other show, um, our ATC Answering the Call. So we're going to bring her on in a minute. But I do want to tell you some good things. Um, and Skylar, I should have you read this. You, you know all about our Facebook. You should all know you know all about uh, mm-hmm. everything. But what, before I read this and, and give some phone numbers out, Skylar, tell us a little bit about you, why you're here, what, what you're doing here, and, uh, and what you do um, as far as Genesis House goes and Friends mm-hmm. in Recovery, because you're very involved with Friends in Recovery. Yeah, um, well, um, I got clean at um, Genesis House in 2008. And I've been clean since. And so I'm active in my recovery. I'm active in the field. And um, Friends in Recovery, the podcast, the virtual meetings, um, the Facebook, all that good stuff um, I'm very involved with. Um, it's, it's it's my spiritual home group. I have my NA home group. And I have my spiritual home group and Friends in Recovery. And it's it's the energy in those rooms. There's such, something different in these rooms that, you know. But um, at Genesis House, I do the alumni program. So I'm an alumni and I also do the alumni follow-up. So it's really a good way that I feel like I'm giving back, you know. Absolutely. To, the, to yeah. others. Yeah. And uh, you're very good at what you do as well. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you are, Skylar. Thanks. Real quick, guys, if you want to get a hold of us, if you want to welcome Skylar, you can send us an email at help at friendsandrecoverypodcast.com um, or give us a call at 617-379-1163. Um, and that's 671-379-1163 or help at friendsandrecoverypodcast.com. Um, let's welcome Skylar, everybody. You know, give send us those emails and those, and those phone calls and I'll be sure to get back to you. Um, also just a reminder about our friends in recovery online step meetings, two a day, one at 12 noon and 7 PM. That's seven days a week. Skylar hosts one of those along with our alumni meeting. She hosts on Tuesday nights. Um, if you go to friends in recovery, community of support pages and Facebook or friends in recovery, um, podcast page, um, you'll, you'll figure out how you'll kind of get on, you figure out how to get on there or just find us here and uh, and send us a note at, at those um, at, at help at friends and recovery podcast. So Podfather, you came up with this guest. I know Anne's been on our show in the past, but you came up with Anne again. And uh, sometimes re- recycling guests are, are great, <laughs> and sometimes uh, especially when they're good guests. Yeah. I I, uh, yeah. I was I had the pleasure of listening to Anne's show um, this morning, and uh, she did a great job. And I'm thinking to myself, well, c- we could save a bunch of time let's just replay her show <laughs> but that's not how we do it but i'd like to introduce ann periella and has been working for the pelham new hampshire police department for the past 19 and a half years she's currently a lieutenant in charge of administrative um, operations and has a bachelor's and master's in criminal justice from umass law and is currently working on her master's in social work from salem state and anticipate anticipates to graduate um, in May of 2021, she's currently in, in, interning with the Podfather, her own Podfather, Mike Miles. She's an intern with, and also um, works with Jeff Zazel for this academic year. 
She resides in the lovely state of New Hampshire, where it's always cold and always beautiful. <laughs> and Anne loves golfing and boating on, I hope I pronounce this right, Winnipesock? Winnipesaukee. Winnipesaukee. Yeah. Lake Winnipesaukee. Yep. Winnipesaukee. All right. Well, Anne, um, welcome to the show. And, uh, and, um, Podfather, why is she here? <laughs> why is she here? Oh, you read her bio. I mean, and I you love a lot of good stuff too. She's an accomplished athlete, college athlete, high school athlete. She um, does a lot for the community. And, uh, you know, Ian is going to be the future of what policing, um, I, sh I think, has always should been, and in some cases has been, but will de is definitely going to be. Um, uh, the future of what policing should be and will be um no doubt about it and i gotta i have a good feeling that you know she, she could do another 15 years and there's going to be a lot of changes in policing and uh, she's definitely going to be ready for it mm -hmm. so and tell us a little bit about what what you're doing and how, how the podfather says you're gonna gonna be changing policing podfather changed it years ago by stepping up and doing what he does and and becoming, um, you know, doing his, you know, he, he's helping out in a substance abuse field. Um, and I think that's the, the direction you're going, right? Yeah, absolutely. I have a, a couple different avenues that I want to go. First, thank you very much for having me on here. Um, I'm definitely honored to be here. Um, I am in my third year of Salem State and eventually going to earn a master's in social work and become a clinician. Um, the reason I'm going down that path is because I don't think there's enough support in a couple different fields. Um, one is with first responders and veterans. Um, I definitely want to work with um, PTSD. I want to work with veterans that are coming back and transitioning into civilian life. Um, but a lot of what I have been seeing is that substance abuse is going hand in hand with everything that's going on in life. Um, my job as a police officer um, we are very involved with the community in Pelham, New Hampshire, and we uh, the opioid crisis has hit everywhere, but New Hampshire was number two for years and years, um, statistically for overdoses and whatnot. So we were seeing things, and, and because our community is so close-knit, you're seeing people that you have worked with for years that are passing away um, due to the opioid crisis. So um, what can we do to move people forward and help them out? And one of those things is, I think, working with social work um, and becoming a clinician, I'm going to better myself as far as educationally to reach out to the community and help people out. Um, we have a unique program in Pelham. We have an officer that's strictly assigned as a drug treatment and prevention officer. And he he has two different hats. One is the um, prevention. So he is out there and kind of our narcotics officer. And then the other flip side of that is he's available 24 seven to anyone from the town of Pelham or anyone who gets in trouble in Pelham with drug related offenses. Um, he's a resource for them to find different um, whether they need a bed, they need um inpatient outpatient um he's really done a lot for the community so um whatever i'm learning i'm forwarding to him mm -hmm. so last year i did an internship for the full year with jeff zizel and you can hear my dog in the background <laughs> right, uh, nestle herself Good dog um, friendly. what's that we are dog friendly <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I worked with Jeff Seisel last year, but what I was finding is that I don't have enough knowledge. Um, as a cop, you deal with um, people that are coming in and getting arrested, and you're taking one portion of their life, but what I'm not doing is helping them to the next step. So I sought out Mike, and um, this year already, it's been, I think, four months, and I'm gaining so much knowledge um, from working with Mike and Crossroads Recovery. So. Mm -hmm it um it's needed yeah yeah and what do you what are you seeing mostly out there as far as um uh, help um I, I know you said your your officer uh uh is doing um something as far as a i guess an outreach program for the community correct for for the substance abuse um are, are you, number one are you involved with that and number two what what are you seeing? A lot of overdoses, or is it a lot of um, heroin or alcoholism? I mean, what 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 is it that you're seeing? You know, as far as that goes, so you know, to kind of 
yeah. if you can d talk about that. I'm definitely seeing fentanyl. It, it's running rapid still. Um, I So I oversee the detective bureau and our drug treatment and prevention officer is assigned as a detective in there. So um, I work with him. I go to different um, conferences and whatnot just to increase that that knowledge. And then besides that, um, daily stuff, if he's dealing with the prevention side, if he needs some assistance, we're a small agency and I'll go out and assist him with any any drug related um, surveillance or takedowns and whatnot. But then at the same token, when it comes down to the treatment portion, uh, he is more the one that we've geared him towards working with the family. So he responds to any overdoses and immediately is a resource for the family, plus um, the person who is overdosed. So for example, if they get sent to the hospital, he leaves the house after he gives some resource, resources to the family and he goes directly to the hospital. He's not there to get intelligence on drug mm. stuff. He's That's there. Good. Say, what can I do for you? How can I help you move forward? Mm -hmm. And and he gives his cell phone number. Um, he's readily available. The police department pays for a cell phone for him to be twenty or available twenty four seven. Um, so he's more involved in that daily activity. But he and I um, talk about different approaches and whatnot um, that I'm gaining working with Mike, uh, the pod father. So it's. Um, <laughs> But we're definitely we're seeing a lot of overdoses. We're seeing a lot of fentanyl um, and things quieted down for a little bit. But with the COVID, we're starting to see an uptick all over again. So um, yeah. it isn't going away anytime soon. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to say um, so Ann, Ann's been with us for four months at Crossroads and um, she works with me exclusively. Um, she attends um, AA meetings, even though she's not a. Um, uh, someone who needs a, a, a recovery, but she's there as a intern and she introduces herself as Ann, Mike's intern. Uh, everybody, <laughs> love, everybody loves her. I'd say the medium age of the people we're treating is about 37 and uh, men, women, uh, mothers that have had their children taken off of them because of their alcohol, drug abuse, um, which is very sad. Uh, men that have not been able to see their children because of some of their past behavior and arrest. Um, but we have a very, very good success rate at Crossroads in uh, Salem, New Hampshire. And we have a, I'd say we have a probably 65, 70%, um, maybe even more, uh, which is off, off the chart. And we also have a very large um, population of people that attend, you know, with, with you know, we, we, we say stay as safe as we can. Mm. But my point is, Ann is really respected. Um, first of all, Pelham is very close to Salem in New Hampshire. The towns border each other. And um, the fact that she is a police lieutenant, um, you know, the, the clients didn't know at first. And we had decided not to throw that right out there, but not to hide it, obviously. Mm -hmm. But eventually um, it came up and Ann stepped up and said what she does. And she gets a lot of respect, but perfect for this job, because what she just said about it's not so much being concerned as a police officer about where it's coming from. You know, we have narcotics, we the bureau, we have detectives, we have patrolmen, patrol women that will do that. But more importantly, trying to save lives of an addict, somebody who has a lot of good things going on in their life. Unfortunately, as you know, Ed and Skylar knows, and as I know, they get addicted to substances. And it's not like it used to be with policing where you get thrown in a drunk tank or a detox. Um, for the night or you were arrested and you had to go to court dope sick you know it's changing now and it needs to change because too many people were afraid to call the police when somebody was overdosing there's new laws about that now that if you do call the police and you're in the presence of drugs narcotics especially you're not going to be arrested so there's a lot of good stuff going on that the public's not aware of you know they talk about defunding the police well i don't agree with that slogan at all what I, what I would say to do is keep educating the police and maybe get the public to come and see what the police actually do. And they might understand this job a lot better. Yeah. And more, more on that subject on our other channel, ATC, switch over to that one. And we'll, that's actually a good topic. We'll get in, into more of that um, over there. But uh, real quick, um, Skylar, did you have anything to add add to that? Yeah, um, I'm just so um, I'm curious what. Um... Uh, like community involvement you guys do um different things like um is there like 
you guys have a community meetings or um, I know that that's a big part of like the advocacy that you like to do. So I was just curious what kind of community activities you have. Uh, we're definitely very involved with the community. Majority of our outreach goes through the high school. Um, so we go into the schools and teach drug and alcohol awareness and prevention. And then we tap into that parent um, as far as that population, sending out emails to uh, blast to all parents of the students to try and get them in. And then the COVID has really slowed us down from doing any in-person stuff. Um, so that it's more one-on-one -on -one at this point, but in the past we would we had um, a woman come in and she, I don't know the name of the program directly, but um, she brought a bed in, like a whole bedroom and set up a bedroom in the high school, in the auditorium and went over different places that stuff could be hidden. Oh, wow. And our officer, um, plus our school resource officer, who's a drug recognition expert, they talked about um, and made parents aware of what drugs look like and what to expect in the behavior and what may change. Um, so as far as outreach with any drug and alcohol awareness, that's pretty much what we do at this point. Mm -hmm. And then um, our detective sergeant, he has helped families after families, even before the, the position was put in place. It's definitely, we don't want to see people fail. Um, we want to see people have a healthy life. And that's been our mentality, at least at our agency. I can't speak for every agency, but, mm -hmm. um, people are good people and they don't, they're not born to, uh, to live this way. You know, it's not fair. So what can we do to help them out? Absolutely. I love that because I mean, how many times have you, we all know the word crack pipe, but some of us don't even know what one looks like. So yeah. it's yeah. great for parents to see, cause you know what I mean? But, um, and, and I love that the, the concept that you're doing, I had wrote down about like the police officer, if there was problems for people going to them, but you're, you're shattering the stigma by bringing like it into the IOP and the different, like, I love that you're shattering the stigma with addiction and that you can't approach a cop with this kind of stuff. Cause you're right. We're all good people at heart and we want to help each other. Yeah. Yeah. Real quick guys, we're going to take a quick break here. Um, when we get back, we'll, we'll answer some more of those questions in and uh, we'll talk about maybe your future, what's, what that looks like with all these degrees and, and all this fun stuff. And also um, Sky, like the point that you made about the, uh, about um, not not being um, a detective, you're you're here to help people. I want to get into that too a little bit, so we can kind of encourage people to maybe to look for the police to help them out. So, Podfather, you want to do your duty? I'll do my duty. Um, I just real quick want to say I didn't get the memo about wearing something green today. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll try to be more attentive. <laughs> my emails. <laughs> Friends of Recovery Podcast. We'll be right back. You're first. First to respond. First to put others' lives before your own. And in an emergency, you need a network that puts you first, that connects you to technology, to each other, and to other agencies. Built with and for first responders. FirstNet, the only congressionally authorized wireless network for first responders. Because putting you first is our job. Since 1992, Genesis House has been helping real people heal from addiction on their private recovery campus in beautiful Palm Beach County, Florida. Their family-owned program is accredited by the Joint Commission and offers detox and dual diagnosis treatment in a comfortable and confidential setting. At Genesis House, they focus on treating the underlying causes of addiction. Their comprehensive approach includes psychiatric care, individual and small group therapy, trauma healing techniques, and holistic care including yoga, massage, and animal-assisted therapy. After treatment, their clients enjoy the lifelong support of a nationwide network of Genesis House alumni. Call Genesis House today at 1-800-737-0933 to speak with someone who understands. Visit them on the web at www.genesishouse.net. It's time to start your journey to a long and successful recovery. Hey everybody, welcome back to Friends of Recovery Podcast.com. I am the pod father, Mike Miles, and I'm here in Studio C, and I'm also with my good friend, my partner, Jersey Egg guys. There that's that's my cue. Is it was that my uh, cue, Father? Uh, <laughs> and and we also have a new co-host. We have the lovely oh. Skylar with us. Skylar, welcome to the show. Welcome. Thank to you. I'm gonna have to get a nickname. <laughs> we'll nickname you. All right. Podfather nicknames everybody, so he gave himself the Podfather, and then now he. he 
he came up with a whole bunch of stuff. But real quick, by guys, Ann Pariello from the um, Pelham, New Hampshire Police Department. She's a lieutenant up there. We're going to have her uh, come back in on a second. But guys, you know what time to talk about. Oh, well, maybe no. you don't, Skyler, but Podfather, you know what the time it is. Oh. We get my buff bag out. Hold on. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> it's sober pod time, everybody. <laughs> ling -a -ling -a -ling. <laughs> uh, yeah. Carl, Ellen, and Steve over on the on the left coast. Uh, they're a great show. It's a it's a it's a show kind of like ours, but they touch really? on um, yeah. Podfather's been listening to them for a long right. time now, and um, they've been um, they've been promoting us. They promote our twelve step meetings, you know, uh, all, all the time, and. Um, I just want to say hello to them guys, Carl, Ellen, Steve, and Chelsea. Um, they, we, we're more of an interview kind of show. They're more of, um, they take, take a topic and they beat the shit out of it and they run with it and they, they beat it up to death. So if you guys want to listen, go tune over to their right. Um, sober pod, Google, uh, sober pod. They also have a Facebook page and, uh, soberpod.com. They also have a secret Skylar. They have to listen to this. They have a secret Facebook page. You have to be part of the Facebook page to watch um, watch them live or something. It's pretty cool. So uh, just go check all that out. Tell them friends in recovery sent you, um, and tell them that uh, that Podfather does have a sober pod uh, tattoo now. So <laughs> <laughs> and Periella, thank you for joining us. Uh, you have to listen to our nonsense stuff, but uh, <laughs> that's what that's what's demanded out of us. So <laughs> and welcome back to the show. So before the break, we were talking about um, uh, Skylar brought up um, your drug and uh, your drug treatment and prevention officer. Um, and I think what she was getting at, if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, Sky, is that um, you can go to this officer and say, listen, I got a bad drug problem. I have, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he's not there to arrest you. He's there to help you get treatment. He's not going to take you to jail. And do you want to explain that a little bit? Because I think this is fascinating. I think every police department should have this. Yeah, it's growing. We we kind of mirrored a program from the Laconia, New Hampshire Police Department, um, but their officer is strictly just um, an outreach person, um, where ours is outreach and prevention. Um, with what, and the detective's name is Detective Bruce Vieira. What Bruce does is um, he's readily available to everyone. Um, he has helped, he's been in the position for about three years right now, and he has helped so many people, like people that I saw when I was a school resource officer over 15 years ago, um, growing up that ended up getting like struck by the opioid crisis. Um, he has worked with a lot of those people that I even watched grow up mm. uh, and completely helped them get sober, get resources. Um, he has networked all around the area to find out what his resources are to even offer up. Um, he definitely networking is huge to get the assistance because beds fill up so quickly. Um, there's, he is like always doing research on insurances. And so when he, someone comes and they say they don't have insurance or they have certain types of insurance, um, he's got like this whole book at this point with resources to help people out. And he is not like New Hampshire does have a law that protects you if you call and someone's overdosing. When we go there, we're not making arrests. The, the whole goal is to help people. And I'd imagine that a lot of states, if not all, um, should have that shortly. So Bruce would get called to these overdose calls. When he goes there, he's a resource. He is not there to arrest anyone. Um, he is there to help them out. I had mentioned that he, you know he's a resource for the families if there's an overdose death. He completely helps with the families. Um, and we we actually had one case where the family asked us to, to move forward and find out who dealt them the drugs. Mm. Um, so we ended up, they ended up doing a reverse sting. And we actually have a guy in jail right now. Um, and he was convicted for dealing. Mm. That's not the point of us going there. But if <laughs> families ask us to do outreach and go down that avenue, um, he can run with that as well. But his main goal, people call him, they call him regularly, they send texts, whenever he gets a text message that's like, hey, man, I just want to let you know, I just hit three years sober. Cool. Um, he forwards that stuff to us. 
Um, and when I say us to, to his sergeant and myself as his lieutenant, and then I forward that up the chain. That's the stuff we want to see. Um, one of our, our detective sergeant was just reached out to on Thanksgiving Day because I write it by weekly every week. And um, I just wrote that last night. And it was um, he got a phone call from a father. I just want to let you know, thank you so much for helping my son. He was addicted to opioids between the ages of 14 and 19. He's 21 right now. He's still clean. He's working full time and you changed his life. Um, that's what we work for. So um, you can call us. And if someone calls or walks in the lobby and says, I'm high, um, I need some help. This is who we put him in touch with. Um, yeah. We'd call him in. He knows that he has to be available 24 seven if need be. And that's just a part of the position. So um, he has chosen to take that on. He takes a lot of pride in it. He does an awesome job. Hey, you know, what's funny. It's like, it's funny, we, funny how life is, you know, so Bruce's dad, also Bruce Vieira, I uh, grew up with him and, and uh, we go way back to uh, younger <laughs> years, like young teens all the way up um, to where we are now. And I think Bruce actually used me as a reference when he went to Pelham because I was still um, a police <laughs> officer. But here's the good. He lived right across from my daughter up in Pelham and my grandson, Brandon, who's 19, um, just loved Bruce. Bruce was in high school at the time playing football. He's a phenomenal football player. And uh, I mean, this kid was like, uh, I, he could have probably made it to the NFL. A little, maybe the height wasn't there, but everything else was there. And um, he would, my, my grandson would be yelling out from his bedroom window across the street, maybe a half a block away. I was watching him and his sister one day, my granddaughter. <laughs> I hear, good night, Bruce. He's screaming out the window. So I run upstairs. I think there's something wrong. And across the street, I hear, good night, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> just one of these guys that you could just tell. Now, he's a teenager at the time. And uh, I love hearing this about resource officers uh, that are there for, for a specific reason and the, the lives they can save. And, you know, this has been going on a long time. Maybe there weren't labels or names on them, but this is this is really good stuff. <laughs> Excuse me. You okay there, Pot Father? Take a no. drink. <laughs> So, Ann, is this is this something that's going to um, keep continuing, you think, throughout um, the system? Um, I think Podfather is trying to get to the to the uh, to the point of where um, where, you know, where we're going to have this and see this throughout, because this is kind of a pilot program. I know Waterville Police <laughs> Department in Maine also they they do this. Um, and I, we're, we're part of their their little in that net, their network. Uh, Genesis House is part of their network. But um but besides that, um, that's only you and, and Waterville, are the only two places. Now, do you see this going carrying on throughout? Yeah, the rumor has it a lot of departments are looking to put this position in motion. Um, staffing is the number one issue and then funding. So can you allocate your staff and, and change mm -hmm. around the whole structure to put someone just in that position? So I know that there's a lot of talk about it. I know that. Um, with the COVID hitting and the opioid crisis starting to pick up all over again, it is, um, it's definitely, it's making people look outside of the box. And then just in general with policing and our approach with people, it's real important that they don't see us as tyrants mm -hmm. and authoritative people that walk into a house and make arrests. Um, so society as a whole is changing and we're just kind of, modeling that way. We just went through reaccreditation. Um, we're nationally accredited through CALEA. And when we had that process, um, Bruce spoke to the assessors and everything was via Zoom. And the assessors, one was from Florida, the other was from Illinois. And the one from Florida said, well, how, like, how do you know that you're even making a difference and you are not going to save everyone? And he was putting him on the spot on purpose, not to undermine him in his position, but to see his response. And Bruce came back. He's like, listen, I am not going to be able to save everyone. I mm -hmm. definitely am not. But I will always be a resource for everyone. I don't care if they live in this town or not. If they need some help, I, I can and will help them. I'll do whatever I can. And that's the mentality because we can't save everyone. We know that. Um, but we can do our best to affect as many people as possible. And that's the goal. Good, good, good. Pod, but, Father, I'm sorry while you were choking there, I no, took no. over. <laughs> but I, I really think it's interesting what Ann just said. Um, in 88, 1988, 89, 
I, we put on Tom Fleming and I put on our first seminar for police stress. And I had just got in, I was three years sober in recovery. And I had gone to a chiefs of police convention as a keynote speaker about cops with a drug problem, alcohol problem, recovering, and then coming back to work. And uh, this was in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, not a real, um, you know, not San Francisco. This was Pittsburgh. All right. And I got a standing ovation, which I was shocked. But more importantly than that, I got called from a, a producer from World News Tonight. Her name was Beverly Jackson. And she was the producer for um, Peter Jennings show, World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. And I actually went on that show and talked about my addiction. Now, this was back in the 80s. And that was one of the questions that was asked me by Mr. Jennings. He said, you know, do you feel like by coming public like this, talking about a cop with a drug problem, you know, doing illicit drugs and then coming back to work, do you feel like you'd be helping or hurting law enforcement? And I said the exact same thing. I said, if I can help one or two cops out there with problems, you know, I feel like I'm helping. So I think, you know, I think police in all different cities and towns, even without the label or the funding, I think there's always one or two, um, at least I know from experience, I've seen it, cops that do, you know, kind of drop their guard and, and go into a different mode of uh, policing um, just to help people because you deal with it every day. It's part of being a cop. You know, you can't just throw everybody in jail. Mm -hmm. well, Scott, you, oh, go ahead, Ann. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> you going public with that anyways, I think was, is impressive in two different ways. Yes, with the police officers that are fighting issues with sobriety in the background. Um, however, with the public as well, because mm -hmm. just because you're in your uniform doesn't make you invincible from this disease and from taking this over you are your person first before your cop and you're letting people know that hey we all have struggles but we can still move forward and you're mm -hmm. continuing to set that example absolutely yeah, yeah mm -hmm. absolutely and real quick we have a couple minutes left here um i'm gonna completely go off this subject and i am gonna say live simple remain grateful that's over to the, over your head behind you <laughs> um i love that i've been watching it looking at it the whole time and and I love that. Talk about that. And and Skylar, I know you probably have you probably eyeing that too. The same thing that I'm seeing. So, um, you know, is that is that how you live your life? You live simple and you remain graceful. You are a police officer. You see a lot of bad stuff out there versus um, the world. You know, the real world that you come back into. So, talk about that if you don't mind. Yeah, no problem. This is actually in my living room. I'm at home. Um, that is definitely how I live, without a doubt. Um, we. Like in life, I think that if you take stuff for granted, you're going to lose out. Um, every single day that I wake up and I had to do this for a while before it became a habit, I think about what I'm grateful for. And sometimes it's the same things that it, as it was the day before. But at the end of the day, it might have changed a little bit and something might have impressed me along the way that I'm grateful for something new. I think that if you live simple, then you live more in the moment. Uh, I'm huge with mindfulness. I'm huge with just respecting others and uh, and respecting what life has to offer. Um, I'll tell you, like my favorite thing in the world is enjoying a sunset. That's simple, costs nothing, and I'm grateful to be able to see it. You mentioned Winnipesaukee with my bio, um, out on a boat watching a sunset. I'm in heaven. Mm. So I think uh, living simply and uh, remaining grateful for what we have and what's in front of us, health are like people sobriety you name it um little things that may you have to work hard for um but at the end of the day they are simple because we're grateful for what's in front of us and and just taking steps forward absolutely absolutely sky i know you have something to say about that sky <laughs> and i love because i'm all thinking about is an orange sky and i love orange sky sunset <laughs> um but uh, yeah, and you know, I was at one of my son's birthday parties like a couple of years back and I was sitting with uh, a, a cop and he was telling me how he took extra courses to know about different drugs and how they react, you know, reacted. And I remember thinking at the time, like, wow, he's like really being nice about this. Like he's not, you know, yeah. and because, you know, there's this expectation and pressure of you guys that you have to fill, fill this role, but there's also an expectation that we think that's going to happen to us as civilians. Like, you know, so um, I remember like just talking with him. And at the table, everyone thought we were crazy because we could identify and we're talking about the different stuff and the human service field, how it is. And, um, you know, it, it was great to see that. So I love seeing more of this. So I'm grateful for that because I, I love to see the human service field 
serve the humans, you know what I mean? Because you guys are just like us and the expectation, the pressure that's put on you isn't always fair. So, I mean, um, this just brings you down to the, the human level, humanistic level that, you know, some people don't see, you know? Yep. And- well, we go. go ahead, Ian. Sorry. Sorry. I, I feel like I have so much to share because I've gained so much over the last four months working with Mike. I said um, at one of the recovery and addiction meetings last week, I think, or the week before, um, I had mentioned in the past, like I do a lot of reading with like Navy SEALs, motivational type stuff. And um, David Goggins. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, I believe in the fact that, you know, make your goals small and just make it to lunch. Um, well, I was driving home from the meeting and I had said that to them, like, instead of looking at the full day, break your day up, just make it to lunch. And I said to how the Navy SEALs use that motto. Um, but I actually, from my work um, with recovery and addiction, I actually see people that are fighting sobriety every single day is more of a Navy SEAL mentality altogether mm-hmm. because Navy SEALs cannot step back and let their guard down. If they do, they're going to be killed or someone else is going to get killed. Mm-hmm. Um, the same thing is what I'm learning with sobriety. You let your guard down, then you're, you're going to go potentially right back down that same path. Mm-hmm. So the power that and, and motivation and determination that a Navy SEAL has Someone who's fighting sobriety, you're dealing with that same mentality. That's in you. That's not in someone else. That is in you. Mm -hmm. Um, So I shared that with them the other night. And uh, I said, you know, I'm just getting a whole different look. And this is why I'm here. This is why I'm learning. So it is, uh, it's powerful. Mm. Yes, that's a goosebump stuff. I had goosebumps. It really is. (laughs) That's a good goosebump stuff. Yeah. Dr. James Reese, who was a, uh, he was one of the first profilers from the FBI. And uh, he spoke at our uh, second seminar, Tom Fleming and I's second seminar. And um, he said police, he wrote an article called Policing a Violent Society. And it's all about the struggles police have to you know, encounter and how society perceives them. But I'll never forget what he said. One of the paragraphs, he said, police are just a mirror image of society. You know, and we are paid, police are paid by society, by the same people that they're arresting or helping, you know, whether they're getting a cat out of a tree or arresting a, a bad person. Um, but society pays, they pay the police, you know, so we should be part of society. We should be mm. on that side. And it's so good to see it finally happening because, mm-hmm. you know, it's just been too long of a time where somebody would get it. And I've been there where they, people get arrest, arrested. They're good people. They just have a substance abuse problem. Mm. Yeah. You take that away and life's yeah. good. You know? Well, guys, remember, we're not sick people. We're not um, bad people getting good. We're sick people getting well. And, uh, you know, that that's that's how you have to look at it. Just because, and of course, there are consequences if we do something wrong. Yes, of course, you, you have to get caught, number one. <laughs> but number two, um, <laughs> let's see, and smiling over there. <laughs> yes, I never got caught. <laughs> um, but, you know, that get, also kept me in my addiction. It also kept me out there longer. Um, you know, you think, you know, okay, I got away with it. But, um, and I'm sure everybody else can attest to this, that it just kept us doing, you know, I got one over on somebody. But, um, but you know, we're, again, we're not bad people getting um good we're sick people getting well just like any disease good point Um, yeah well guys and thank you so much um we're just about out of time here but thank you so much for being a guest um podfather like you always say to me what a great guest you you outdid yourself on this one podfather and and um thank you so much i we did have the pleasure of meeting in person and i do want to say that you know the presence when you walk into a room um, of of how you you hold yourself and and you you Absolutely. keep yourself is amazing and really uh, with with being a police officer or not being a police officer um, you have good vibes and um, you know it, it just it's just amazing how you live your life um, simple and and grateful and and that's what I got when I, when you walked into the room with us and uh, thank you so much for being a guest today Ann. yeah thank, thank you for the service you do yeah thank you, thank you because. We need advocates like you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, great, great having you on the show. See you Monday, hopefully. Hope things go well. And uh, what a great show. And yeah, I think guys. I might have, real quick, I think I might have a nickname for Skyler. I don't know. When I was a kid, <laughs> when I was a kid many years ago, long before most 
probably all of you were born, there was a show on my <clears throat> pilot. And it was about this guy who had a little plane and his daughter Penny, and they would go save people and animals. So how about Sky Queen? Sky <laughs> oh, Sky Queen. King. Yes, I've heard. Yes. Sky King. Sky, Sky Queen. Queen. Yeah, yeah. Sky Queen. Uh, yeah, yeah, I like being a queen. Sky Queen, right? <laughs> we, will, we will come up with a definitely a nickname. Right. But, um, yeah. I, guys, Anne was just a, just an amazing guest. I mean, yes. just the information she has. I could have went on for 10 hours, you know, with, with talking yeah. to her. Just amazing, you know. Oh, and, right. Yeah. yeah. And she's just and check out our other show that we had too, because on answering the call, because that that really like helped touch on the advocacy part we didn't really get into today. Right. So it should know, be on more shows. Yeah, yeah she'll, she'll be on another, another show. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. 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 Well, Skylar, your first official show as a um as a host, how do you feel? Is it you know different? Uh, you know, now all the media is gonna be coming knocking on your door and asking <laughs> for autographs and interviews. So uh, the show yeah. goes far. It goes far. It takes people far, Sky. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the goal, hey, right? It got me sober pot. It got me to, inter- right. to t- talk to the guys at sober pot. It gets, it gets me free cigars. <laughs> yes, it does. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, and they come on the meeting too sometimes, the virtual meeting. The sober they do. Sober pot yes. does. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. So, so great, great show. Great really. Time. So good having you on, Sky. Skylar. And, and believe me, this is going to be uh, going forward. It's going to be good. So glad you're here. Yeah, Thank you. yeah. Glad to be Our here. Father, you want to do our sure, sure. The, Friends in Recovery podcast. Stay, oh, stay sober, everybody. 